what is Avogadro's law? I'm gonna go over Avogadro's law just like I did with Boyles and Charles in the previous videos. So I'm gonna go through the graph, a particulate view, a model of it, and then some sample problems. This is the first sample problem that we're gonna to do together. And then I actually have three sample problems this time. So before we get into the sample problems, let's just go through what Avogadro's law is and what we're keeping constant and what is changing. So again, this set of notes is in the description below. These two images I have right here on the underside here, and then you can put your sample problems there. And then again, on the back, you have some helpful things that I have for you there. Okay, so what is Avogadro's law all about? Well, it's when you keep pressure constant and temperature constant and you let the moles and the volume vary. And so if we have more moles of gas, the volume will have to go up to keep the constant pressure at that constant temperature. So here's my particulate view. And I'm showing that with a thermometer that they're moving at the same average kinetic energy. So my arrows on average should be about the same length overall, okay? Because it's a whole sample of gas. So again, temperature is the average kinetic energy of all the particles. And I'm trying to show that it's staying the same. We're also gonna keep the pressure constant. So what's gonna happen is if I have more moles of gas to keep the pressure constant at that same temperature, the volume has to go up. So it's another direct relationship. So let me just kind of show you quickly with, with the model and then we'll go on to the sample problems. So here's my little model and in here I have a certain number of particles and maybe this is the temperature that they're at, okay? So if I were to add more moles of particles, here they are. Now normally if this was a balloon or a syringe or a piston, this would just expand when I put more in. So imagine blowing up a balloon and if you blew up the balloon, what happened is these particles would have to then take up more volume. So I'm just gonna kind of magically show that it takes up more volume by putting it in another container. But the reason why I want you to see the containers is I need to move these particles the same way I moved them in the container before, meaning that I need the kinetic energy to stay the same. I also need the pressure to stay the same. So the collisions with the walls of the container, which is force per unit area, also has to stay the same. And the only way that can happen is if you have more moles, the size of this uh, container would have to change. And again, this is really easy to model with just using a balloon, blowing up a balloon, okay? All right, let's get to then the actual practice problem. So here's the first one that I'm gonna work with you. And then I actually have a second one that I'm gonna work with you. So I'll lay both of those kind of down so you can see them both. So first we're gonna do kind of a simple problem using the equation, and then we're gonna use an STP molar volume fact. And then our last example, I'll even place that one down right here, put it right kind of like that. That'll be our last example that you're gonna try on your own and then I'll reveal the answer. All right, um, let's just do this one first though, together. And you know, you'll need a calculator most of the time, so girl, grab that if you don't have one. So let's get going. And again, I'm just gonna pull this down so I have that equation uh, visible. And again, remember, I'm gonna be dividing these two variables. So the first thing I have to do is write down what are my initial and volume and moles. And then again, what are my final volume and final moles? So again, a lot of times people will use an F for the two and a little I for the one, the initial, the final, but I really like just using ones and twos. So it says our first sample here has 1.50 moles of helium and it's got a volume of eight liters. If 3.5 moles of helium are added, so be careful trying to give this a little bit more unique problem, um, what's the final volume? So we're gonna keep that in liters, gotta keep these two the same usually to solve for it, and then you could change it after. But you have to solve for it with the same unit. Same here, but be careful. We had 1.5 moles, and then it says we added 3.5. So be careful with this problem. What could get you is you may not realize you have to add the total, which is gonna be 5.00 moles of the helium. And again, that's why I like my little model, just so you know, like I added more. So then again, what should we predict? If you look at the graph, the volume should go up, right? So if we have more moles of gas, then the volume should be, you know, go up for that process. Okay, so now let's just write down this equation that we have right here and see if it's kind of an easy one to solve for. Usually I like to start with the easier problems first. So we're solving for V2, and usually that's not that, that difficult for people. So they just take with their algebra skills, they multiply both sides by N2. And what that does is it cancels out your N2, and it leaves you with N2 V1 over N1 equals V2. Okay, 
So now we've got it isolated, but then most people like to see the V2 on the left, they just do. So then what we're gonna do is put in our new total moles, which is five, because remember we added the two together and that was of helium. If you wanna number unit labels, a good practice. And then the initial volume was eight. And then our original moles, be careful, always kind of look at which one you're put placing where. That's why I always say write this given down. Um, and I know maybe some of you are getting used to this if you watched all the videos, but I would still recommend writing, you know, writing those, you know, units down. The other thing too is you can, you know, you have proof that the volume, or sorry, the volume is the surviving unit and the moles are canceled. Okay, so five times eight, I'm just gonna do that. Sig figs I'll deal with in a second, 1.5. And so I get an answer for V2, and I'll write this all out. So 26.67, you know, it's all repeating. But again, I had, um, oops, I kind of lost a zero here. I have three sig figs there, three there, three there, so I can keep three. So then my final answer for volume is 26.7. And then again, box out your answer. Your teachers are gonna be so thankful you do that. Plus, as you're boxing your answer, kind of always ask yourself, does that make sense? You know, did the volume go up or down? And the answer is it went up, and that makes sense according to our, you know, our graph and our particulate view, okay, that if we're going to keep, again, the temperature and the pressure constant, the volume is going to have to increase if we add more particles in it, just like a balloon you've blown up probably hopefully sometime in your life. All right, the next one we're going to need this fact. So another version of Avogadro's law is using what's called molar volume. So at standard temperature and pressure, that's what the STP stands for, it's at zero and one ATM. Um, any gas, as long as it's acting ideal, um, which is the kinetic molecular theory postulate. So how do you know if something's acting ideal? They have to follow these rules. Those are the rules to say you're an ideal gas. And if, the, if it is ideal, then it occupies this specific volume no matter what gas it is. So it's almost like no matter what type of particles I put in this container, if I had one mole of them, they would equal 22.4 liters. So let's look at the second you know, sample problem. I'm gonna have three total. There'll be one for you to try. Don't feel bad, you're not getting left out. So what you can do is take this fact and create a conversion out of it. And then what you can do is it's a quick solve for the answer as long as you know about uh, your diatomic gases, in this case, that that's hydrogen. And as long as you know that the molar mass of one uh, hydrogen is one gram per one mole. So you might need a periodic table for hydrogen and then so the molar mass of two would be multiplying this by two moles. So that would be the only thing that you may not know or you have to review is your molar masses and calculating that for a particle because we're gonna use a lot of times a mass. So we're gonna say I have four grams of hydrogen and as long as I know that this fact is true, I'm just gonna pull it off because I have it up here too. And I just kinda use this fence post method to convert if you've not seen the videos I've done before. And then this two, this is gonna equal two, you know, this is gonna cancel, this is gonna equal two grams per mole, but I put the two on the bottom and I'm just doing a very rounded molar mass. It's actually like 1.008 times two. But for this example, we're only gonna be able to keep uh, two sig figs in the end, so we'll be fine. So then what you do here, instead of kind of using this gas law, you're using um, kind of like a, a, you know, stoichiometric conversion. So instead of using this gas law, you're using uh, a conversion fact that if this is acting ideal, and hydrogen would act ideal, it's gonna have 22.4 liters. So again, I wanna have my units all canceling, and like this, okay? And then that means my surviving unit is liters. This is a dot right here. And if you check on your calculator, um, I can even kind of do this, you know, eyeballing it because four divided by two, that's why I chose these numbers, is two, and then times that, so you're gonna get 44.8 liters as your answer. Now you could still check to four divided by two times 22.4, okay? But now if, I guess if I'm being really picky and I can only have two sig figs, then I may have to round this to 45 liters then as a final answer for my volume. So you can just find the volume of a sample of gas. Now we didn't do anything to it, okay? Did you notice that? We didn't do anything to it. We didn't add anything to it or take anything away from it. We just try to find the volume of that sample, and we can do that by, again, using this fact right here. As long as it's at STP, it has to be at zero degrees and 273, or the same number, and then it has to be at one ATM or 760 millimeters of mercury, or also called 760 tor. So if you have that kind of scenario, you can do kind of this calculation. Be careful. Here's the other thing I see people do wrong with this calculation. I see a lot of people, um, a lot of, you know, beginning chemists, we'll call, we'll call them. You can only use this conversion for a gas. I, I've seen people try to use this volume 
for you know liquids and solutions and solids. No, you cannot, okay? It can only be a gas. All right, it's time for your practice problem. Here you go, okay. So pause the video, write that down, and I will reveal the answer just like I've done in the other video. So here's your third example. All right, here's the answer. So what you wanna do is I made this one a little bit challenging. Um, I used eight grams, so I started with grams, which might make you think I could use the STP, but nowhere in here did I say it was at STP. So be careful, I did that on purpose. You can't use STP right now because I didn't tell you the temperature or the pressure, I just told you that it's constant. So you can't use that. So I'm gonna use the original you know, gas law uh, right here, okay? This is another version of it that I would highly recommend writing on the front side of your notes. Let me just kind of slide this up so you can see everything at the same time, there we go. So this is just another version. I went through this in the other videos that if you're having trouble you know, moving variables around, this is another version that would be great to put right on the front side, right up here. That's why there's some room. And what I had to do first though, is I did have to use the molar mass to get moles, okay? And then I was a little tricky here. Um, we're gonna solve for the moles that were added and the mass that was added. Okay, so first off, you've got your volumes, you've got your moles by doing this conversion, okay? Can't use the STP fact. Then off we go to solving it, just kind of like we've done before. So it kind of went down here and I solved for that 0 0.63, sorry, 0 0.63 moles is the total moles that was there if it went to this larger volume. But then I took that moles and went back to mass, that same molar mass, I just used it and inverted it. So then now I have my mass total. And then what I did kind of down here, this is my last step, I went and then subtracted that from my original and I found that I must have added 12.2 grams of oxygen. So just kind of think too that, you know, if we had a balloon and we were blowing it up or you had an oxygen tank and you added more to it, it got filled, this would be the mass that was added in and it, it, it made the mass go to 20 point, you know, two with sig figs and the moles go to 0.63. So I did kind of throw a little hard one at you, okay? All right, well, I hope that helps. Again, if you'd like a copy of these, it is actually uh, even longer than that. I'm gonna move on to uh, Gay-Lussac and Dalton's Law, and then maybe I'll work through and find a time to get the combined gas law and Graham's Law video. But right now I did Boyle's, Charles, Avogadro, Gay-Lussac's next, Dalton's after that. And then on the back here, if you if you you know print this double-sided, you have room for gas stoic and pressure conversions, which I do a video on, and gas variables in the kinetic molecular theory. So it's just double-sided, kind of looks like that. And it's a great thing for you to use if you need to have your gas laws really visible. All right, good luck chemists and hopefully watch another video of mine in the